Hello. Hi guys. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I just did I just broke my absolute social media rule. To just... not say hi guys. Oh babe. I hate it. I've just oh, broken babe. my own rule. Hi guys. Bridget Deptford says, hurry up you guys, it's 2 15 a.m. here in Turkey. So are you watching Happy Valley in Turkey? Um I am stuffed on Greek pastries. <laughs> He's suffering. He's oh, suffering. No. Um, how are you all? Did you watch Happy Valley? It's for you. Oh, sorry. Until the end of January. Oh, God right, almighty. so Happy Valley. I thought it was an excellent episode. I thought we were a bit weak last week. Last week was the weakest episode. So though we were excited about it today, I had a little trepidation. Yeah. But I thought right from that first scene, which again showed that I love layered talking. They just don't do this enough with British television. No, it's too blocked out, isn't it? In American it? television, mm. you can layer. People talk over each other. Mm. But mm. They just don't allow it for some reason. You, I think the reason, there's a very practical reason. It's they just like easier. to have. Well, no, they, they like to have lots of options in the edit. That's what I mean. It makes it easy for well, the edit. We didn't say edit, so I didn't realise. Sorry, that. that's what I meant. It's just lazy. Isn't it? It's easy. It's to really lazy, it's easy. and it and it removes the authenticity and natural flow of any scene. And I think she's just. I mean, I can't take my eyes off her. That I can't scene, take my eyes off her. That scene was so brilliant. The arc to it, mm. and all those different looks that she gave him. Mm. She makes every. She One of her who? bosses looks like oh, a total yeah, yeah. fucking arsehole. Well, she makes them all look like arseholes. She makes every single one of them, the detectives, oh the coppers God, on the beat. I love her so. She makes them all. Oh, look, CNE Nails didn't like this episode. Okay. Oh, why? Yeah, tell, why? Her, tell, tell us, us why. why. Tell us why. One of the things I did like about this was we got James Norton in a manner that yes. wasn't uh, the messiah. He wasn't, just, so he wasn't just a very naughty boy. He, I th well, we loved that moment where he stood overlooking the kind of landscape, didn't we? And he had that interior moment, which I thought was we great. We just, this was him. You know, he was, have, this is the brilliant actor that we know he is. So this was fantastic. I thought he was utterly, but oh God, I mean, we've jumped ahead a bit, but. Um, well, no, that was right at the beginning. He finished his cycle ride. Yeah, but just in the train station with the dad, did, did anyone else think when Ryan was going down the escalator and he went, I thought that was him, I thought that was Tommy oh, on right. the platform. Right. I was absolutely shitting myself, oh, I thought right. what's going to happen here? Well, there were lots of things this programme made me think were going to happen that didn't happen. Yeah. So, but before then, I thought there was, I th what I really like about James Norton's character, I don't know if you think this, guys, is I like the naivety that's in him. He's not just villain. You know, it could be very easy for him to have him done all these terrible things. There is a... Even well, even if it's a psychopathic naivety, there's a kind of not innocence. I don't want to use innocence, but you know when he said, "I've not been abroad," you know, there's that sort of unworldly wise aspect to him. Uh, and Bradley Wiggins was mentioned, Haley Edwards. I love that. Except last week, I was calling him Bradley Higgins. I think, as an actor, playing a character that is a sociopath. To be able to put moments where you give that audience a moment mm. of compassion. Mm. So I thought that first moment when he took the helmet off and he just stood and breathed the air and the freedom and, and cried, that was so good. It mm. was so real. It mm. was just fine, fine inhabiting of a character, wasn't it? Yeah. I thought I thought, um, I mean there was lots of plot devices here. I have to I have to keep saying the pharmacist the, the scenes just stand out as just not strong, not strong. And and I have to say, I felt it was at its weakest this episode when it did those really obvious crime flashbacks to the crime. I thought that that, that wasn't up to the standard of what the rest of this show is. But the one thing I did think was going to happen was, um, you know, uh, Sarah Lancashire's ex, uh, the, the grandfather of Ryan, I thought he was going to get kidnapped. We were convinced he was going to get convinced kidnapped or he was tortured. Going to get, or taken out. Tortured to say where his I think it could was. still happen. I think it could still happen. What about the scene with the um, his aunt when she spills all the beans <gasps> about James Norton's character? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The woman has been sort of assaulted by him and kidnapped by him before. That scene was very powerful. At first I thought I didn't believe her and then I was oh, like, oh, no. I thought she was absolutely brilliant. But I tell you who's also excellent is um, Sarah Lancashire's son. 
He's such a good yeah, actor. Him caught in that sort of heartbreaking middle perspective mm, between the two so of them. So good. Yeah, I thought it was so excellent. Um, I thought the scene with her sister was just heartbreaking mm. on both sides. Mm. Because, I mean, we've not seen that sister really apologise to her. Well, for no, what no, no. She's done. No, but where Sarah Lancashire's so accurate about it, she's not apologised because she doesn't fully comprehend what the, fuck the she's depth done. of what she's done. So when she, when Sarah Lancashire said you're an empty vessel and your partner is an empty vessel too, there was huge truth in that. You said it, and I think you're absolutely right. She, I think she's going to relapse. I think she's going to go into a spiral. Um, I had a moment where Sarah Lancashire was crying in that scene where. I worry, does anyone else think this, that Sarah Lancashire might top herself? No. No? No. He might kill her, but I don't think she would ever top herself. She's so tough. Mm. Isn't she? She's so like... Well, might I might just say that, but one never knows. No, exactly. I mean, what are we talking about? Yeah, you yeah. know very well that... Yeah. People that seem to be completely on top of things. Because let's face it, she's yeah. dedicated her yeah. life to her grandson. And if her grandson goes with him, the way that Tommy might end up getting her is that she feels that she's lost her sister. Maybe, maybe Tommy's she's gonna alienated. Get, maybe Tommy's going to get his son. He's going to leave him. I wish she'd have said she loved him when he said he loved her. I know. Because his dad said it to yeah. him. We all thought that, didn't we? We were all like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, someone just said, is Ryan right at the end there? So I thought it was a very successful scene between uh, Tommy and Ryan on, Tommy the, played on the gaming love. thing. You thought, oh my God, he does love her because it was that great mm. line from his aunt when she goes, he doesn't love anyone, he just mm. uses love. Mm. Mm. And and we all, I think many of us will have thought of that line mm. when we saw real love from mm. Tommy when he was talking to his son and then when he went and then you saw it just go, Dead. Dark, didn't it? Yeah. He only has moments of love. I tell you exactly what Ryan's doing. Ryan is honey trapping his father. Well, Ryan is going to try and lure him that's into. That's what we hope. But, but I, I don't think, think so. But I think that okay. I think that Ryan's granddad is going to be killed. I think the woman who's died in the suitcase's husband. That was interesting because he wasn't convicted or charged, was he? And the detective was talking about the pharmaceutical bills. But you've, as I told you last week, what I want from the writers is that he gets wrongly convicted mm -hmm. because he deserved, because he's been killing her over years, that poor woman. Good. Thank you for reminding us of this. We said it on Coffee Morning, June Chadwick. There are a number of different endings. So none of the cast know which ending yeah. is going out next Sunday. And the ending is next Sunday. So as Elliot, Elliot, you've just said there, they've got a, this is the calm before the storm. There's a lot going to happen. Next week, I wonder if it'll be an hour and a half or something. I think Anne, who's Anne? Which one's Anne? Don't you think... The cop. Don't you think Sarah Lang's character just looks so uncomfortable in that uniform? Oh, God. Does anyone else think that? But, just thinking, oh, I bet you can't wait to get home and put your jammies on. But not just that. No one walks through a door as well as Sarah Lancashire. Oh, she walks through doors geez. like she owns them. I don't think... One hour, we eight minutes, the last episode. an actress... That's good. ...that surpasses her. What about that moment? Really what about that moment when she was at the house with uh, towards the end where she had that confrontation with her sister and she turned around to the table and just that solitary tear just I came know. down her face? I know. This is a woman who prides herself on not letting those moments of upset show and there was that tear. And I, lo I love the fact that she hasn't gone soppy or soft and the story hasn't taken her to a place of trying to build some kind of reparations with her sister she literally went why would i want to spend the night sat with you watching in there telly. watching telly it's, it's an hour and a half next week it's an hour and a half <gasps> was it still nine o'clock though we mustn't miss it yeah but we've got bloody love island as well um I, that's why i think lee Doran, her sister will die and i genuinely believe that was their last scene i think her sister is going to die from alcohol was she a heroin addict as well was she a drug addict? I think she might have been. I don't know, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah well, you're right, Debbie Godfrey. Olivia Coleman is raved about, but uh, Sarah Lancashire... Olivia Coleman is astonishing. No, she's an astonishing, astonishing actress. actress but... but just for me, there's just something about Sarah Lancashire. Mm. I don't... It's just a depth to... Mm. Totally of Olivia Coleman as well, don't get me wrong. Lee Durrant, she was heroin and alcohol. She's going to die in an overdose. Oh, That's what it's going to be. 
she's going to die of an you overdose. You bore me. Yeah, she's been, I mean, someone's told you that and you've been sober and clean for however long. That's your but reason you know to drink. What? Sarah Lancashire's character will know that too. Yeah. She yeah, will yeah, know yeah. that that could push her over. And also, head. he's in recovery as well. And she says he's a hopeless space. She isn't said, it? That's how much you, you let somebody talk you into something. Yeah, yeah. And when he says, when the guy that, whose house they were staying in, when he says something to eat, she says, Yeah, she wants that comfort. And then he goes, Glass of wine. Mm. And the way she looked at him was really weird. Mm. But I think what that look was saying was, Do you really think I can sit down with everyone drinking mm. wine? Mm. Excellent, excellent show. Excellent. Brilliant show. Lovely, lovely to get lots more of James Norton as well, not as a sort of straight villain. You, you, you know, he had to, what he had to it do in that scene brilliant. was pump some believability into what he felt for his son and what his son feels for him. So, yeah, see you next week. We'll see you in the morning.